Greetings, I'm Kathy Green with Christian News and Interviews. And I'm sure that you've heard by now that um, the president or prime minister of Haiti has been assassinated and his wife is in Florida now receiving treatments because she was also attacked. Um, my heart goes out to that entire family. But you know, this is just another thing in a long line of tragedies that Haiti has, has suffered. And I'm starting to wonder, will they ever be able to come up out of it? Um, if you know anything about Haiti, you know about Papa Doc and his crew and how when he fled late Haiti years ago, he took with him over $900 million. Haiti gets pillaged all the time. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of, from, a, from an article that I found. This article is about five years old. And it talks about the fact that Haiti wasn't always the way it is right now. Listen to this. <clears throat> Economically, French occupation was a runaway success. But Haiti's riches could only be exploited by importing up to 40,000 slaves a year. So... Haiti, uh, Haiti was, was under French domination and they had, um, the French people had, were t torturing Haitians. Of course, the Haitians were slaves. Listen to this. For nearly a decade in the late 18th century, Haiti accounted for more than one third of the entire Atlantic slave trade. Conditions of these men and women were atrocious. The average life expectancy was 21 years. Abuse was dreadful and routine. Had they not hung up men with Okay, this is a Haitian slave talking. Listen to this. Had they not hung up men and men with heads down, uh, drowned them in sacks, crucified them on planks, buried them alive, crushed them in mortars, wrote one French slave sometime later. Had they not forced them to eat ex excrement? Had they not thrown them into boiling cauldrons of cane syrup? Had they not put men and women inside barrels? studded with spikes and rolled them down mountainsides into the abyss. Not surprisingly, the French Revolution in 1789 raised a tricky question of how exactly the Declaration of Rights of Man might be said to apply both to Haiti's then sizable population of free, generally the offspring of white plantation owners and a black concubine and ultimately to the slaves themselves. The rebellion of St. Domingue's slaves began in the Northern Plains in August, in, in August 1791, but the surprising ensuing bloody civil war and finally bitter and spectacularly brutal battle against Napoleon Bonaparte's forces was not over for another 12 years. As France became increasingly distracted by war with Britain, the French commander Vicomte de Romanbo was finally defeated in November 1803, though not before he had hanged, drowned, or burned and buried alive thousands of rebels. Haiti declared independence on January the 1st, 1804. And you all know the rest of the story. They ended up having to pay reparations of billions to, to France to get themselves out from under them and they haven't been the same since. That's one of their problems. They've been bankrupt. But another one of their problems is, in my opinion, that voodoo that they won't come out from under. Even though most of them are Catholics, the truth of the matter is their true religion is voodoo. And as you know, they're only, well, most of you know, there are only two spirits out there. There's the spirit of God, and then there's the spirit of the ungod. The spirit of God as a Christian is Jesus Christ, but the spirit of the ungod is the devil. And so if you're worshiping under a religion such as voodoo, witchcraft, um, you're worshiping under the spirit of the devil. And there's no, I just don't see a positive, any positive outcomes from that. And so Haiti is in trouble. It has always been in trouble. And until they come out from under this wicked religion of voodoo, I just don't see anything positive coming up from out of Haiti. It's very sad. Keep Haiti in your prayers.
God bless.